Bay Fashion welcomes Jamie Austin, lead curator and director of programs for Zero One and Zero One Garage and Zero One Biannual, mm -hmm. and also Anna Babel, uh, assistant curator. Jamie, I've, I've wondered, you had such an interesting career from both IT, the IT world and the art world. Uh, you're the lead curator of, I think, it has to be one of the most innovative, exciting mm -hmm. collaborations <laughs> for art and technology in, on the planet today. How did you uh, bridge that gap from IT into art and, and make it all work <laughs> for you? Well, I grew up, you know, in Silicon Valley, so I feel like in that way technology's kind of always been in my blood and like so many people here, I mean, I think this multidisciplinary nature is what really defines the area. And so, I don't know, when I went to college, I was still interested in technology, studied information systems, you know, loved art, studied art history, and you know, have somewhat, you know, been able to bring the two of those together. And Anna, I understand you have a wonderful background from high fashion in London, working yeah. with a top designer, Hussein Chalian, yeah. and you're also with the Tate yeah. in London. Uh, and you came recently to Zero One, I understand. Yes, exactly. I arrived in the US in May last year, and I really owe it to um, Hussein Chalian actually to make that bridge and connection happen. So I come from a fashion design background, and initially uh, my own practice never involved technology but working with him and his really conceptual artwork and practice really kind of informed this this process of how you can bring technology robotics mechanics electronics into textiles and it opened a world to me that i had never experienced before so coming to silicon valley with my husband who's an engineer i was determined if i work in this art world i'm going to work in an organization that embraces this intersection Wonderful. and i think zero one is the place yeah and i think i mean even working at you know software companies like i did for quite a few years before switching over full time into the arts i think you know what i realized is just the parallels really yeah. between artists and technologists you know both are innovators risk takers entrepreneurs and i think you know that's important to really look at the similarities between the two I mean, it's an immense project. What are those selective principles mm -hmm. um, or what are those active principles that you're using in this selection process to bring in these emerging artists and the, the collaboration? Is there a guiding principle? Yeah, I mean, I think we're so fortunate just with there's so many, you know, amazing artists out there, you know, who are creating this wonderful work that we have the opportunity to showcase. I mean, I really feel honored to be in this position. But I think, I mean, when thinking about the Zero One Biennial, which takes place every two years, and every biennial has a different theme, and that definitely directs kind of the principles that we look to when we're selecting. Yeah. So the theme for the 2012 Zero One Biennial is Seeking Silicon Valley. And we're really looking for this idea of Silicon Valley and how artists can provoke thought around kind of what this area means. Because in a lot of ways, Silicon Valley can be placeless. Um, you know, when people come to visit Silicon Valley, you know, you go to the airport, you pick them up, you say, you know, what do you want to see? And, you know, we were talking about that. They say, yeah. I want to see Silicon Valley. Where, Where is, is it? it? Yeah. And exactly. for this, uh, I understand um, the Seeking Silicon Valley, the opening ceremonies are going to be in Zero One Garage, your new venue, yeah. to help identify and give a sense of, of place to Silicon Valley and this wonderful collaboration. Is that correct? That's correct. That's our hope. So September 12th. Uh, the Zero One Garage opens in downtown San Jose's Sofa District, and so Zero One has this permanent home. And really then our goal for Zero One and for the Biennial is to help reimagine Silicon Valley. And by bringing a public art program, an exhibition program, and performances with this hub in downtown San Jose, we're really hoping to reimagine the area where Zero One is based so that it looks and feels like how people imagine Silicon Valley to be. Uh, it seems this also would just afford a wonderful magnet uh, to attract uh, further collaboration. It seems like this is not just a sense of place, but you're inviting um, a whole discovery process in a think tank with artists and um, innovators in, the, in technology and in media to create new tools where we can move forward and, and discover and create a future. Is, is it a think tank? As yeah, well. I mean, there's, there's well, yeah, yeah, there's multiple there ways of saying it. I think like the think tank is one of the many aspects, but I mm -hmm. think like 
the way Jamie has always described the biennial as a sort of curatorial structure is this enormous network and that there are so many different parts of it that belong into this network. Some of them are the think tank that Zero One is creating for the future, mm -hmm. which is the Zero One Garage. But for the biennial and under the, um, um, the biennial umbrella, there's so many avenues we're pursuing with working with corporations like eBay to actually create site specific works. We're you know diving into the public realm to really you know create commissioned works in public space. We have this Zero One Garage, mm -hmm. which, which is an incredible opportunity for us as an organization and really for international artists to come here, ex you know, experience the valley itself, respond to the valley itself, um, exhibit their work, and then you know, interact with people here as well. So there's so, so many different facets to the to this valley and to our experience. Mm -hmm. that I think yeah, and really, I mean, at Zero One, I mean, our goal, you know, our mission is really to be, you know, where art meets technology to yes. shape the future. And I think being an, or an arts organization, a nonprofit that's based in Silicon Valley, by you know being the zero one biennial, mm -hmm. which is really the only contemporary art event in North America that's really looking at this intersection of art and technology, I think it's really important that we reflect the modes and operation of the yes. region in which we're based. And that's what Anna was saying, which really we think of both zero one and as the biennial as this network, network that expands out throughout the entire area, it's not just Zero One. Also included in the biennial, we have more than 45 partnering arts organizations based throughout the Bay Area and beyond that we're networking together to create programs that are under the Seeking Silicon Valley thematic. Well, and on top of that, I mean, Jamie's actually reached out and created a curatorial collaboration inside of the actual biennial exhibition, which is an unusual format. and quite an adventure um, to, to invite for other international curators for this one specific exhibition to try and imagine what Silicon Valley is, yeah. but from, what, how did you describe it, from inside out and outside, outside in? in? I like that, yeah. Yeah, and that's what'll be at the garage, is the Seeking Silicon Valley mm -hmm. exhibition. And there's five curators, like Anna yeah. and I invited four other internationally based curators, and we're all women, which I think is kind of interesting because in that way, we're almost twisting a little bit some of the kind of statistics on the area. I mean, if you do much reading, oh, yes. you know, more than 95% of executives in Silicon Valley are male, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you know there's something to, to be said though that there's you know women kind of shaping right. this future around technology. I also understand the number of commissioned works that Zero mm -hmm. One has engaged in is just phenomenal mm -hmm. for, for uh, a nonprofit uh, to engage in the, this collaborative scope and to do commissioned works. Uh, how many public scale pieces have you done now? Well I mean since Zero One began we've commissioned more than 100 artworks um, that have been, you know, in exhibitions in public art. You know, in the Zero One Garage exhibition for 2012, um, we're presenting work by 24 artists. Half of those are new commissions, mm -hmm. and we have an additional kind of 12 large-scale public art projects. And then in our Emerging Artist Network event, which takes place on Friday, September 14th, called Emerge, we're focusing, uh, we have 49 projects by emerging artists. The total number of artists is I think 84 last we checked for that specific event who are presenting new work you know using uh, experimental and radical new technologies. Mm -hmm. Do you want to comment on any of the artists, uh, the emerging artists that are going to be showcased in Sneak Seeking? Peek. <laughs> Yes, maybe. Sneak I mean, peak, the, yes. the beauty of the Emerging Artist Network Outdoor Exhibition is that it really encompasses so many different mm -hmm. types of artworks. We've invited artists to specifically focus on projection pieces. We've got an urban screen actually in San Jose that we're uh, mounting as part of the uh, public art program, which will also show some of the Emerging Artist content. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of performances which are going to be weaving their way through the streets. Obviously, the more classical installation pieces that are st you know stood on the street that you can participate in and interact with almost play with so there are loads and loads of different layers to this this outdoor exhibition so you shouldn't expect a kind of trade show style street of tents but you should like Jamie was explaining you should really imagine Silicon Valley in some shape or form or whatever is in the back of your mind when you think of it and you'll be walking down a street that somewhat represents oh I, mean, I, I can't wait I can't wait for September <laughs> for September 12th it's great I mean just one example yeah. we have artist rebar and artist collective based in San Francisco and architect yeah. Christopher Haas are collaborating on a project called SkyFi, kind of playing mm -hmm. off of the Wi-Fi name and oh. it's going to be this kind of luminescent street canopy that stretches over South First Street in downtown San Jose Incredible. so as you're experiencing the work by all these emerging artists you're literally going to be wrapped in kind of you know a fiber optic light sculpture that streams down the street. 
is there also a space orchestra connected <laughs> with with Zero That's One? That's a wonderfully fun yeah. project. So the artist Nellie Benhayoun, she's a French artist based in the UK. Um, and she's coming here to present a work called International Space Orchestra. So she's part of the exhibition, but I think the, the really yeah. interesting part is to mark the opening of our urban screen in downtown San Jose, she has brought together an orchestra of volunteer members from NASA, NASA oh Ames, based here in Silicon Valley, and they will be performing a space opera that she has written in collaboration with um, uh, science fiction author Bruce Sterling and a few other musicians. It'll be the first time it's a world premiere of the space opera. They'll be performing that. There'll be a series of talks um, by scientists from NASA, and then we'll have a film screening of her project. And all of this oh. takes place in public space, and all of it's free. Exactly. So oh, no excuse goodness. not to come. <laughs> Is there anything else involved in the Seeking Silicon Valley identity that is going to move forward into the future outside from the events from September 12th to December through, December, 8th. through December 8th? Definitely. What, what are you creating to take this and move it forward into the future to, mm -hmm. to create an underpinning for further collaboration and for this project really to galvanize? What, what yeah. to commission a public art project for their campus that will be you know, open to the public, it's site specific, it's by two artists, Jer Thorpe and Mark Hansen. And I think what's interesting is when people come and want to see Silicon Valley, you know, they often do this pilgrimage to the different technology campuses mm -hmm. around the area. And what always strikes me is that all of the creativity and innovation happening yes. inside are completely locked behind these closed doors. So in a small way, we're hoping to kind of crack that open. eBay's been a wonderful visionary collaborator in that way. It'll be a large scale projection work on their North Campus campus that anyone you know can come by and see and it's using live data streams that have been provided oh by both eBay and PayPal um, to kind of place eBay in a cultural context uh, within Silicon Valley and then another yeah, one that is really a model that you're pursuing I mean that's that's a huge one that zero one's future is definitely going to be embedded in. I think there's been a lot of interest in general about this idea of bringing it together, but I have to say, yeah, eBay definitely hat off. They're the pioneers. They're willing to make that move. Oh, so that's when I think we'll continue, yeah. you know, working uh, with companies that way in the future. I don't know if you want to mention some of the arts platforms and that whole idea in downtown. Yeah, I mean, one, for example, that we're working on is um, it's a really cool program called Art Here that was actually born in San Francisco by an arts group um, that participated in a hackathon. The whole idea was to, to find a tool and a way to bring um, space and art together and kind mm -hmm. of revitalize urban underused spaces. So what they've created is literally a website, which is sort of the platform and a tool that the community is meant to engage with. And any mm -hmm. participant in the community can put up an underused space, make it available, and an artist can respond to it and propose something. So Zero One in this case mm -hmm. has kind of come in as the prototype. We decided that this, this idea needs a region, needs a specific starting point. Mm -hmm. and, um, we have basically been working with the community in San Jose to get 13 places and spaces available. And artists have actually proposed work over this website. We have, in a small curatorial process, selected these projects mm -hmm. and they're going to be exhibited from September 12th onwards. So San Jose is sort of the mm -hmm. prototyping city. Um, we're retesting A, the features of the website and B, the kind of communication of how cities and communities and artists actually work with each other to make it really happen. Yeah, and that's and called, you know, that project's Art Here. Yeah. And you can go to siliconvalley.arthere.org to see all of that. And I think yeah. that's what's important about the biennial too, is even though we're looking at this idea of Silicon Valley, you know, you don't necessarily have to be here to be part of it. Of course, we'd love you to come to right. San Jose between September 12th and 16th for our opening weekend and all our festivities. But we have a lot of online projects um, that you can experience, you know, uh, even, you know, at your own desk. There's an interesting one by Stamen Design, yes. a design group based in San Francisco here called From the City to the Valley. And they're looking at kind of flows of brain power and how, you know, so many people <laughs> kind of live in the city and, you know, board their shuttle bus to their corporate campuses, you know, right. in the peninsula and are kind of shuttled back and forth that way. And what does it mean to have all this brain power flowing, you know, down these main kind of freeway corridors? And so it's a mapping project using data that's all tied to transportation. 
it, you've really liberated <laughs> art from the traditional convention of limitation and art as a commodity to really an interactive mm. process to shape the future. Um, I, I truly, I don't know of anyone else who has as comprehensive of a platform and a basis. And, and how many partners did you say that Up you're working 45? with? Mm -hmm. 45. 45 partnering organizations. And I think the beauty there is that we're you know, rather than kind of over um, planning our, you know, biennial opening weekend, we're really giving each partnering organization in their cities mm -hmm. kind of breathing room. So we're focusing mm -hmm. on the on 01's opening weekend in San Jose specifically from September 12th to 16th. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, the gates were really open for all of the events, performances, mm -hmm. panel discussion symposia. We have a variety of things happening in densities throughout Berkeley, San, Jose, um, San Francisco, the entire peninsula. So I think, yeah, definitely sh check the schedule on our website. Yeah, there's some big ones. SF MoMA is doing a wonderful exhibition by artist Raphael Lozano Hammer. Mm. Um, you know, we have Berkeley Art Museum kind of doing an experimental live streaming lecture by uh, Nicholas de Monchot. You know, Stanford University is presenting a performance by Robert Whitman. Alonzo um, King. Yeah, Alonzo King fantastic. Lines Ballet oh, are goodness. collaborating with Jim Campbell to present a dance you know, presentation. So I mean, we literally are blanketing, you know, Silicon Valley and the Bay Area with these arts events and this full program that's almost three months long. You've created a new destination, really. <laughs> we that's hope the biggest so. compliment. I think. <laughs> yeah. A destination, yeah. definitely. Well, I think that's the thing. I mean, Silicon Valley is so, you know, famous, but at the same time, there really is no kind of singular culture, or central yes. gathering place, cohesive architecture. And so I think some of it is we want to, you know, use these artists to provoke thought and thinking yes. about, you know, place and identity. And also, what does it mean that all these technologies are invented here and then kind of move on to propagate the world? Yes, it is an energy vortex and you're giving it a face which even with all of our, our um, the new technology and the connections that it makes, mm -hmm. we still, as human beings, we have to give it a sense of place, face, and connectedness. Uh, and uh, it's just remarkable what, uh, what you're doing with Zero One. Well, thank you. And we were really excited about the Zero One Garage space, yeah, you know, opening huge. on South First well, how, Street. How many square feet is this? It's 10, a 10,000 square foot, it's you know, huge. raw industrial space. Yeah. And, you know, we, we call it the Zero One Garage. I think one, you know, to play off kind of this, you know, garage hacking ethos and all of these uh, famous software companies that have been started in garages like Hewlett Packard and Apple. Um, but also, I mean, the space it literally was an auto garage. Oh, literally. <laughs> it, so. was, it was. A, it was an auto body, you know, paint shop, basically. Um, it's been empty for a while. We've completely remodeled it. And so the biennial exhibition is the first thing that will open in that space. And then we'll move on. It'll be the Zero One offices. We're launching the Zero One Garage Fellowship Program, which is focused on bringing arts and industry together to solve real world innovation challenges. You're funding fellowships, is that it? Or? We are in collaboration yes, with companies. So we have two fellowships that will be announced at the biennial. One is in collaboration with Google, that's looking mm -hmm. at public policy. And the other one is a collaboration with Adobe and we're looking at kind of the next creative app. Amazing. So let's bring <laughs> artists into the conversation because I think that's what's so important is that artists are really the, kind of the preeminent thinkers of our time. And I think a lot of times, especially here, we focused on, you know, entrepreneurs and business people, but really, I mean, artists are kind of, you know, embody those characteristics on a daily basis and they should be at the table and the work that they do can look at a lot of the problems that we're mm -hmm. having. And I think both, um, you know, we don't just want to glorify Silicon Valley. We also right. want to look at the other side. And we have artists like Lynn Hirschman Leeson, who's a you know pioneer from the Bay Area. And she's presenting um, a work called Present Tense that's looking at water toxicity levels throughout Silicon Valley and the Bay Area and reflecting that in a video installation. Mm -hmm. Actually, that reminds me as well of Institute for the Future is one of mm. our partnering organizations who've been wonderful and who have actually helped us to design the biennial map. And as part of that, it's a commissioned artwork, really, that we've asked them to also play with this idea of how you reimagine Silicon Valley and being Institute for the Future, their expertise mm -hmm. lies in re research of the future. And they've, be they've laid four future scenarios out and embedded them within this navigational map mm -hmm. that kind of play with this idea of 
the positive, the negative, but without being critical, it's, it's an investigation of um, how our actions effectively shape the past. And they're sort of projecting what will happen in 20, 2023, I think. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think it is. And it's amazing because from things like, you know, one of their negative titles is sort of collapse, but then there's also transformation and like other yeah. ways that you can kind of progress and um, see how the future happens. So that's a very... Yeah, and it kind of helps us visualize the network that is Zero One, because yes. I think it's a network of, you know, curators, it's a network of art organizations, it's a network of artists and really of, you know, individuals who gather together to, you know, kind of rethink Silicon Valley and that idea. And I think the garage as a face for this, yeah. it will be an important locus for this very organic, it seems, process mm -hmm. of looking forward into the future, using that creative process where there is no map. Mm -hmm. We're here, <laughs> let's interact. Yeah. And um, I think every process is such a key words. word to that. And I think that some of it, I think, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, contemporary art events or art events in general kind of only display the perfect completed work. And so I think we've been, you know, really trying to open up the process, you know, of art production, yeah. of thinking through these ideas as something that's also, you know, participatory for the public, because that's where all of this interesting thinking really takes place. Right. It's a real paradigm shift from art or even technology as a commodity moving it into the realm of process and using that as a tool for exploring and creating the future and shaping it. Exactly. So it's, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, and really, I mean, the technology is the tool. I mean, that's, you know, a lot of it, too. I mean, technology yeah. is the tool that a lot of these artists are using to express their ideas. And I think sometimes it's important as well to say, I think when people think of art and technology, they sometimes take it too literally. I mean, we're not talking about just flashing like LEDs. Like, like, <laughs> um, some, some artists are really incredibly smart about creating a technically an analog piece of work that has nothing physically to do with technology, but reflects on the ideas of it. So there's so many different facets and um, different names associated with this art and technology world as well. But I, yeah, I want to encourage people to put their preconceptions of what these two words next to each other mean in a way and actually just yeah just come and see for yourself there's an awful lot to to investigate and explore that will and you know the first few events can you just uh, encapsulate what will happen then on September 12th 13th and 14th absolutely so September 12th that's the official opening of the zero one garage and there's kind of a preview event that's at the space and you can go to zero one biennial.org and we have the full mm -hmm. schedule of events that are available and then on Thursday September 13th is really our kind of big public party we're opening the zero one urban screen on South First Street with the performance by Nelly Ben Hayoun and the International oh. Space Orchestra. And then there'll be kind of an after party at the Zero One Garage uh, from 9 to 11 that night. The space is open all day long. Mm -hmm. And then Friday, Friday, September 14th, is really the day that we're focusing on emerging artists. So again, the Zero One Garage space is open. Anyone can come and explore. But then from 6 p.m. to midnight, is Emerge, which is the Zero One Street Festival, where we're literally filling three city blocks with you know, close to 100 projects by artists that are, you know, working in experimental ways and so staying open. So big block party. Big yeah. block party. <laughs> and then great food live drink music, too. beer tasting, oh um, and all of that. So yeah, we're really trying to kind of bring people out downtown and, you know, create, oh a, create a network density. Um, this is a celebration. Exactly. Yeah. Mega. Exactly. And then Saturday night, the film programming continues at the urban screen. We have public art tours. Um, our street festival continues on Saturday through the day. We're going to have a, a curator panel with all of us kind of talking about the background of the show. And then, you know, from beyond that, I mean, the exhibition stays open. We have artist talks that last through the duration of the event. I think that's what's interesting, too, is, you know, we have more than 200 artists presenting work in the biennial. And, you know, many of them are international artists flying from other places to really come and make Silicon Valley this nexus mm -hmm. of creativity for, you know, at least a specific moment in time. It's been an absolute uh, delight and honor for Bay Fashion to, to host uh, two very talented and highly capable curators of an immense collaborative effort that is just, we're all going to be on the edge of our seats seeing what happens <laughs> next. So I can't wait until September 12th. Jamie, it's been a great pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you and Thank Anna you. for coming and, and sharing all of this uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, events. Thank our you. pleasure. We hope everyone comes out. Mm -hmm.